Finally got around to adding all of my tie downs to the Sport Haven trailer. And I thought I'd just show you exactly what I did now. Um, I bought E-Tracks. They're galvanized E-Tracks. Um, I went with the galvanized. They say that zinc up against aluminum isn't supposed to be bad. And then I bought some of these um, chocks that are E-Track mountable. But um, for the galvanized E-Track here, I figured I wanted to isolate them with a dielectric between them and the aluminum. So... What I did is I started out by um, wiping down any manufacturing oils off the bottom of them where they mount. And then I bought some uh, 0 .005 UHMW polyethylene tape. That's um, kind of like a dielectric tape to keep the dissimilar metals from reacting. And I'm going to apply that to all of the tracks wherever they uh, contact the trailer. And then I made a little punch drill out of a piece of one quarter of an inch tubing, stainless steel tubing. I put in a lathe and sharpened it. And I'm using that to knock the holes out because it's impossible to drill this stuff. So pretty much, um, you know, just using a round hollow pinch punch like that worked. And I finally figured out exactly where it had to go on the trailer to um, match up with Gizmo's wheelbase. And you can see I started drilling some holes and I did decide to go with all, use all the holes, um, just to have even loads on the aluminum. And again, here are some stabilizers. I'll show you how I put on in a little while. So pretty much I got the uh, two eight foot tracks in the front. I'm mounting down. I'm just uh, drilling the holes and there were approximately 360 holes in the end to get them all mounted. Uh, I was going to skip holes, but then I figured I wanted an even load on the aluminum, and uh, I just figured I'd, you know, go with all of them. So it did take quite some time to uh, get everything lined up and holes drilled. It's only thin aluminum, and once I got the front ones on, I was able to measure the back ones and cut them with this evolution saw here. And this thing's been a great saw. I'm on the second blade on it now, but it's still working great. You can see it does a really nice job cutting. Anything steel cuts really nice and clean without a sparks or anything. And then I have some, uh, it's, like a, it's like a cold galvanized coating here. I'm going to hit the cut areas with just to uh, make sure they don't rust away. And I'm going to do the same thing on these short sections in the back. The UHMW tape and get that all ready to go. And I got... Got my holes drilled in there and got to clean up some of the chips that you make when you're drilling. I'm getting ready to put the bolts in. Now I wound up buying 400 bolts. Uh, I got stainless steel bolts and these are stainless steel uh, nylock nuts. Some stainless steel washers and then I also got some rubber washers to put in between. Just to um, kind of seal them off and keep moisture out. And so it's going to be a bolt from the top, and then on the bottom there's going to be a rubber washer, stainless washer, and then the um, lock nut. And I have some other stainless bolts I'm going to use that are longer to drill into the frame members and tap. And then I have this dielectric grease that I'm going to put on all of the bolts as I put them in. I just kind of want to keep moisture out, and this is the same stuff that you use on light bulbs and like, uh, you know, boat trailers and stuff like that to keep corrosion out. So all that does is it keeps moisture out, and it kind of makes a seal and prevents corrosion between, you know, any of the dissimilar metals. It's not a, it's not a conductive material. So I'm going to put that on all the bolts, and actually that did take some time to get them all done, but... And I did slowly but surely, one at a time, and was able to, you know, get some of them started from the edge there. But this actually turned into a, a monster job by the time it was over. Didn't realize just how long it was going to take to get all these uh, washers and stuff started from the bottom. What a job it was laying on the ground underneath it for approximately six hours total just to get the nuts started and washers and everything held in place. I had to put weights on the bolts on top and then just 
get in between the uh, edges on the bottom and it wasn't a fun job but I got it done and um, you know I'm kind of glad I put them all in and I had to get some help going back and tightening them all while I was laying under the trailer holding the yeah. wrench on the bottom the wife was uh, tightening them from the top there so you know it did take a little bit of time but I think it was worth it you know nice came out looking nice and uh, there'll be less stress on each bolt in each aluminum joint so then once they're in I went back and I drilled and tapped the cross members on the frame they're like a quarter inch thick aluminum so I, I drilled and tapped them and I ran some more bolts directly into uh, each cross member now this aluminum flooring is also welded to the trailer too so um, you know it's it's really going to be a strong combination I think and I will say it did take me a couple days to get them all bolted down but there they are in place and there's the bottom of it you can see how it's not easy to get in there you got to twist and turn and there's very limited clearance so um, and get up around all those members so it wasn't a lot of fun but I got it done and you know everything looks good and I think it should be a, a permanent solution we'll see and then it's time to put these stabilizers on the back for when I'm loading things that used to pick up the back of my truck and I wanted to eliminate that so I bought some cheap stabilizers off of uh, e-trailer I think it was and I made some polyethylene you see those white pieces I machined them to go on the top and then I cut the slides that came with these that were supposed to be welded onto a steel frame cut them down and then I cut pieces with the um, laser of acrylic three millimeter thick to go around each side of that and I'm putting them on there with a double-sided tape turned out they came out the exact size to beat up inside those uh, tubes there so uh, and there's the one ready to go in you can see it's a uh, all glued they're all taped on and uh, first thing I have to do is I have to drill a hole for the cross pin so I've got a drill guide there bushing that I'm going to clamp on and line it up because it's right on top of a little raised lip in the thing so it's really hard to get started exactly where I want and if it's off it's going to be a big problem so I just use a little right angle drill here and started the one side of the hole then I'm going to unclamp that guide. And let's just make sure everything fits up there. But I'm going to put some, uh, this is a waterproof red grease I'm going to put up in there to try to prevent any uh, corrosion or garbage from building up in there. Got to make everything slide easier and make less noise. So that slide, that top piece slides up, keeps it from wiggling and rattling. And then the, um, the bottom piece, you got to kind of hammer up in place using the, the, the stabilizer. I just kind of got everything lined up. And then I use the holes in the stabilizer to guide the drill through straight for the other side. That way I knew it would, um, you know, line up between the, that metal bracket and the stabilizer and everything. Be all square and perfect. And it has dropped down a little bit. I had to push it up. And now I'm going to just put drill and tap in there through the uh, this aluminum trailer thing, the acrylic, and then that stabilizer steel tube. I'm just going to put an M5 in there only because I had the M5 screws the exact length to go in there without, you know, interfering with the sliding part. So I've got M5 by 10 millimeter long screws. So I put an M5 through everything. And I'm just going to put one screw in there to hold it in place and, uh, you know, keep everything from falling out. And that way, if I ever want to take this apart or something jams up or bends, I can uh, just pull that screw out and you know drive it all out so that's also a stainless steel screw that I'm putting in there with a little bit of dielectric compound on it just so hopefully it doesn't um, seize up in the steel so everything's good that didn't hit the slide there and uh, goes up and down fine it's kind of hidden in that member there and I think it worked out really good and the pin goes through there and 
Uh, I left that a little bit longer. I might cut it down a little bit later, but for now I left it, you know, so that I can go down and it'll still be really stable. So that's what it looks like. Let's get it down off the jack. And then I've got this um, long-term protectant. It's kind of like a wax coating. It's like a military-grade coating for um, metal to keep it from corroding. And it puts, puts it hardens to like a waxy type code, and it's, uh, I'm going to coat everything on here just so that um, it doesn't corrode, and you know, hopefully it stays nice longer. So everything, yeah, that really wound up working out good, you know, just a couple, couple simple changes to it and a couple pieces of acrylic to make it fit nice and tight, and looks like it's you know, going to be a really good solution. And now I'm going to just start on the other side. You can see there the, the laser cut pieces of acrylic put on the tube that I cut down. And I actually painted that with the gal coal galvanized paint also to, to keep it from uh, corroding. So there it is with the, the four pieces on there. And then a piece of UHMW polyethylene I machined to uh, fit up inside there goes on there. And I'm just going to go in and drill that right there for a roll pin to hold it in place. And there you can see the roll pins in. Same procedure over here. Drill, the, drill that member. Uh, then use the thing to slide to pound it up in place. It's a perfect fit. Really uh, worked out nice. And drill and tap that to hold it in place. And that's, you know, basically it. work good uh, and I think it'll be plenty for any load that I'm going to put on this trailer so that was really a cheap simple fix they were like uh, $19 a piece for those two brackets so that worked out good and all done with it now ready to uh, go up and load it up now let's take a look at this arrow hitch I showed you that I bought this with the trailer before and this is a um, hitch that actually weighs the tongue you can see there's a scale that mounts on the, the hitch, part of the hitch. And then it came with a couple pins, a locking pin to put it together and, you know, another pin to mount it to the truck. And then I got the 10-inch drop one. I needed it about 8 to 9 inches for that trailer, so I went with that. And you can see it does drop quite a bit. And it is extremely heavy material. This one really, I thought it was kind of the best looking hitch out there for, you know, its weight rating and everything. It's a 12,000 pound rated hitch. And it came with this nice lock to, to lock those two together. And that's also got some O-rings on it to keep moisture from getting in there, it looks like. So that should be good. And I got that nice box on Amazon for 12 bucks. I couldn't believe it that, you know, that. The hitch fits right in, so I'll be able to keep it nice in my truck. So that's what it looks like all together. And let's get this hitched up now. So there you can see it's uh, sitting right right at about the 8-inch drop. Because I'm going to be dropping the, you know, I'm going to be putting the weight of the UTV on there so it's going to drop some. It's got 100 pounds of hitch weight empty which is about right and now it's time to load up Gizmo and find out exactly where these uh, chocks have to go to to get the best hitch weight. So first thing I'm going to do is drop the uh, drop those two stabilizers and you can see it, it just doesn't drop down like it did before. It goes down the hair and that's it so that really worked out good. So it goes right up on there. And I'm going to park right about where it's going over center. Get an idea of uh, the weight that's on the hitch now and go take a look at that. So at that point we were at about 300 pounds. And I wanted to go right around 350 to 400. So I figured that these chocks would have to go up a, about a foot from where it was. So I ran it up again, put the chocks in, ran it up against the chocks, got out, checked it, I just right at about 400, so that's right where I wanted it, so everything looks good, and that's where it's going to be tied down. Now, first thing I do is I'm just going to pull it kind of up against the chocks with the winch. I'm going to loosen that up later, but to get the, the tie downs on and the emergency brake on and everything, I'm going to pull it up there tight. 
And then I bought some tire straps from Vivor.com. Um, I purchased these just because I, I like the collar of them and stuff. And they, I like these little rubber blocks that they came with. They're not the best straps in the world, but I think they'll be really good for my application. They lock right into this E-Track. You can see they just snap right in. And they say tying down to the tires is your best bet with these UTVs because the suspension in them can bounce around and loosen the... Uh, loosen up straps so you can see the little rubber blocks really lock in those v's you know keep the strap centered you know to keep from ever bouncing out if they ever come loose or anything like that and then uh <clears throat> just put the other half in there and pull it through and it's just a standard two inch strap they've got a pretty good rating on them but you know they're not the best and you want to get a couple rolls around that uh reel there to make sure it doesn't slip later <laughs> so then i'm just gonna really crank down on there get the get the little rubber things locked in and crank it down and actually nothing moved the aluminum didn't move the e-track didn't bend so i'm real happy it looks like you're gonna really work good So now it's time to just kind of put those stabilizers up before I forget about them. They worked good. You saw it barely dropped and uh, it it went right up on there. Then once you get the weight over the front, they come up and they pull right out and, you know, go right back in. So there's another strap on the back. Um, everything looks good. Uh, pitch does, it's a little bit loose in the two-inch receiver, but I think that'll be okay. And... You know, all tied down, all ready to go, and Gizmo's going back to the uh, Kubota dealer soon because it's got a, a major problem with um, gas getting into the fuel, or fuel getting into the oil. So they've got to go through and see if they can figure out what's wrong with it. But there it is, all strapped down, and I did add two, two safety straps on the back. You see there's two black straps here going to the A-arms. They're really just loose. They're just kind of an emergency strap I put on there in case uh, something goes wrong or something else breaks until I get a chance to try these for a while. But you can see these are just kind of loose and they really won't put much pressure on it. And I still have the winch hooked up with that strap loose too in the front. And I did get my spare tire finally that came in so I got that mounted. And you can see the winch is wrapped around the frame in the front and perfect combination it really does sit nice and you know that hitch really makes it nice and easy to level it out and get your hitch weights right and everything so i just figured i'd show you that i finally got around to um you know at least getting them all the e-tracks in and getting it ready to start towing uh, gizmo with it and boy i do like this weight safe hitch and one of the biggest problems when dealing with an aluminum trailer is, you know, dissimilar metals. And, you know, as long as you use dielectrics and keep them insulated from each other, you shouldn't have a problem. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.